I thought before we did too much more of a teardown on this engine, we would start looking at some of the parts just briefly on what they are, what their functions are, how, how they uh, interact with each other. Uh, I thought we'd start with the blower housing. The blower housing does so much. It, it has so many different functions. Uh, the first thing is it has, again, the stamp numbers on the front so that we can specifically for this engine get replacement gaskets or replacement any parts for it that uh, we may need in, at a future time. Another thing that it does is it tells us where in the manual uh, to find our torque specifications for tightening down the different bolts. It also has our starter motor in it. If you'll notice, these pawls that are pulled out, okay, they fit on a cup on the flywheel. They go in here. So as you pull it and the pawls come out, it's going to turn this flywheel for us. Another thing the blower housing does is it has a unique shape. And working in conjunction with our flywheel and these fins, it's going to be blowing air uh, around our cooling fins. It's going to be blowing air around our cooling fins on the cylinder and the head dissipating the, the heat so that it doesn't overheat. That's why it's crucial that you never run one of these small engines without the blower housing on it or you'll destroy the engine quickly. Okay. Another thing that the blower housing does with the uh, flywheel is it operates our weather vane here. And that's done with this weather vane right here. As this flywheel spins, it creates more wind, which pushes this weather vane back. Okay? And then the springs will bring it back as this slows down. So again, with the blower housing and the flywheel and the governor's uh, vane, it all works together. This is for controlling the constant speed of the engine. It works in conjunction with our governor spring and our idle spring. And we're going to get more into this, but this weather vane goes straight to the throttle, which will control, again, the speed of the engine. Now, a lot of people uh, don't understand that the governor isn't designed to keep the engine from over revving is to maintain a constant speed. For example, when you're mowing and you hit high grass, you want that engine to be turning at the same speed as if it were uh, cutting just normal, regular height grass. You'll also notice that our flywheel is made of aluminum. On a lawn tractor, it would be made of cast iron. And what I'm getting at is we're talking about mass now. We have a piston that's going up and down, and we have to maintain that piston uh, momentum. And the aluminum flywheel isn't heavy enough to do that. So most people don't realize that our flywheel and our lawnmower blade are actually part of the flywheel. That's why you should never run one of these small engines without the lawnmower blade on it because it's actually part of our flywheel. These fins are very carefully designed. You'll notice that they're not the same height and there's different uh, shapes to them. When these things were spinning, they were getting a, a whistling sound and the engineers came up with changing the shapes and that would change the uh, harmonics of it so it didn't get really loud. Very clever. Inside the flywheel are magnets 
and as the flywheel spins, it's going to be coming in front of a coil. And as the magnets pass in front of the coil, it's going to build up a magnetic field. And as it goes past the coil, it's going to collapse that magnetic field and send a charge to our spark plug. That's how we get our ignition. We also have, that's one type of timing, an electric timing. We also have a mechanical timing that's maintained with this uh, cutout right here and the flywheel key. Okay. You're going to learn more about that uh, later on, but that's going to maintain our mechanical timing. That's when the optimal time for the fuel to be ignited. Okay, that's where the piston's at the right place, the valves are at the right place, and the electronic timing when the spark should occur at the right time. And that's maintained with this key. All that is what we're taking off. All right. The last thing that I wanted to talk about was part of the carburation. If you remember yesterday, we pulled off this uh, crankcase breather cover. For right now, the last thing that I'd like to talk about is this cover right here. This is called a crankcase breather cover. And it does a couple of things. It relieves the, the pressure in the bottom of the crankcase. And it also, uh, for emissions, uh, you're going to get uh, unburned fuel coming down through the valve guides. And this is actually a valve right here. Okay? And it uh, goes in and out. And this little port enters right here. This is that hole, or that right here. It's going to take these unspent gases, put it through this hole, and this is that tube that we took off earlier, and that connects to our carburetor to reburn those unspent gases. Also, yesterday we removed this uh, air fuel tube, and that connects right here. To our carburetor. All right, that's enough for uh, this episode. Next time we're going to be tearing down again further into this engine. I'll catch you on the next one. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this and share it with people if you would. Let's get those numbers going to the million. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you very much.